here to talk today about reporting and clutter and sentiment and collections and how things that have sentimental value to you can actually take over your life. And the definition of hoarding is the excessive collection and retention, I don't know if you can see it in the back, it's kind of small. The excessive collection and retention of things such as paper, trash, electronics, clothing, or animals until they interfere with day-to-day -day functions such as home health, family, work, and social life. If you're depressed, you don't take care of your day-to-day -day household stuff, it gets very quickly out of hand. Clutter and a downward spiral of behavior and low self-esteem. Your, your AT&T bills, your gas bills, whatever. And there are rules, and you can download on, you know, online, or I can, uh, you know, uh, provide information how to find it. You have to keep your tax returns three years. If you're being investigated, seven. Seven, and if you have you have an ongoing investigation, you have to keep them at least ten years abreast. What do you do with photographs? You want them. You want them. You want, um, but you but you know you can't. First of all, you should they should be in albums. They should be in shoe boxes. The shoe boxes again tend to you know they stick together and they get ruined anyway, and so you want to put them in a decent archive of some kind. But you know you don't need a hundred pictures of the same empty mountaintop of a trip you took 50 years ago. You want you know, to keep one, not all 50, you know what I'm saying? So you have to prioritize and think about what's worth and what's important and what's worth the space that it takes up. You know, I live in a tiny apartment. I'm sure most people, most New Yorkers do. And it's, you know, not that easy to find a place to put stuff. So how do you begin to work on something like this? So the first thing is you have a meeting and you start, you figure out what it is you're going to do and in what order you're going to do. You schedule things. Know specifically, you have to really make a work plan. By Monday, Monday we do the kitchen, Tuesday we do the bathroom, Wednesday we do the bedroom, Thursday we do the hallway, Friday we do the storage room and the, you know, some people have, you know, storms in the basements. Um, and you make a plan. I would ask Marilyn, I would ask Annabelle, I would say, who do you recommend? Is there a social worker who can help and work and do the therapy? Yeah. If I can, if I can give a scenario, what would most likely happen is if, if someone gets hospitalized because they broke their hip and they come into a nursing home and they get rehabilitated, there's a plan that has to be set in place before that person can return safely into the home. So what happens is is that if if the client needs to go home with a home attendant, right? Because most likely that's what happens. You get sent home with care, okay? Because that person is gonna need to transition into being completely alone, if they can, okay? Most people transition back into the home with home care services. Now, in order for a home care agency to send their worker into your homes, there is an evaluation process. So a family member is called, or you give your keys to whoever you trust, your neighbor, they go into your house, they get into your apartment, and if they see that your apartment is not safe for them as a home care agency to send their employee to your house, then services such as these come into play, right? Unless the client decides to reach out directly to an agency and say, I need some help. Unless the family is advocating and reaching out to the agency and saying, I need some help with some pain. Okay? But if it's somebody that's going through the system and they're getting discharged from the hospital and they come into the nursing home and then they're getting discharged from the nursing home, the nursing home has to make sure that when they send that patient back home, it's into a safe environment. So with the home care agency, there's a care team. Okay? And the home care agency has within their, their care team, what we call a care team, they have a psychologist and they have a social worker. There's services set in place to help that person adjust. Okay? So it all comes through the agency that's providing the care at home. Okay? Now some people also have their own psychologists. 
some people have, you know, family that helps them cope. But if it's somebody that's going back home with services, there's a care team, there's a social worker, there's a nurse, there's a home attendant that comes into the, there's a, an agency overseeing the psychological, or what we would call the, the chronic medical and mental conditions of that specific patient. Okay.